Fan Showdown, Season 6, Episode 9. And I'd like to know who out there thought that this series would last as long as it has. It's kind of shocking. I, I get, And it'll continue, I guess, as long as you guys keep sending me stuff. So if you want to get in on the Fan Showdown, make sure to check out the description and send your designs to me at thefanshowdown at gmail.com. First up today, we have the 7X110, or 7x110, something like that, which was created by Gear Jammer. Now on the surface, the 7X110 appears to be pretty standard, but according to Gear Jammer, he's put a lot of effort into this one, and he's even done some testing. Gear Jammer said while he was finishing his design and kind of testing it out, he did notice some issues with some backflow problems, and after doing a little bit of research, he found that increasing the blade angle and cutting out a little notch back here by the hub seemed to help. The other thing of note is if you notice uh, at the top of the blade here, right behind the leading edge, you're gonna notice what appears to be vortex generators. Now, Gear Jammer didn't say much about this specific feature of his fan, but I think based on what they're commonly used for, we can kinda, we can kinda think what his idea was. Now, mostly you see these vortex generators used in aircraft and aviation. They're kinda all over the place. The use case for these vortex generators, at least in aviation, you can normally find them most commonly on aircraft wings, but they're also, they can be, they can be kinda anywhere. Now their job is, is to delay airflow separation, which reduces stall speed and improves lift in some situations, and it can enhance control effectiveness at no low speeds. Roll. But planes aren't the only thing that benefit from old vortex generators. They can be found in the automotive world, and I know a little bit about that. Now a fun little lore about myself is I used to own a Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution 8. Probably one of the funnest cars I've ever had. I wish I still had it now. I didn't know at the time how, well I didn't know Mitsubishi was going to murder them and never saw them again. And if I did have that car still, it'd be worth pretty much, probably more than what I paid for it at the time. But either way, that it was one of the funnest cars I've ever owned. And in the Evo 8, specifically the MR trim, they came equipped with vortex generators mounted at the rear of the, of the roof, right, right in front of the rear window. And the idea there was to help improve aerodynamics and kind of make the airflow cleaner over the rear wing to give it a little bit more effectiveness. But based on that little bit of knowledge of vortex generators, I think we can kind of guess that Gear Jammer's idea here was to try to prevent some flow separation over the top of his fan blades and hopefully improve performance. And just like the Evo, it looks sweet. Now next up we have a more complex design. This is the Mav which was designed by Brad. Originally Brad was just going with a standard seven blade design, but then he decided why not make it a little bit more interesting and add some extra features to it. And that's how we ended up with this. After crafting this gym, Brad was thinking, you know, I kind of hope that these little features I add maybe reduce the, the sound profile, make it sound a little bit better by reducing the turbulence. But Brad said that's that's all I guess. He, he has no idea if that's gonna work. He's just kind of hoping it is, and he thinks it looked pretty neat, which I can confirm they do that. Uh, I don't know how effective they'll be, but aesthetically, top notch. Next up today, we have Chris and his fan, Spiral Impeller, which was inspired by the common water pump. Chris said that a fan is essentially just a pump, a pump for air. Now that being said, there are three common impeller designs. There's a closed, there's a semi-open, and then there's the open. The closed impeller is something pretty standard, something you'd see in like a D5 pump. It is what it says on the tin. It's an impeller that is fully closed. It's got a top, a bottom, and some uh, veins within the, the center of the little sandwich there. Now closed impellers are great because they're very efficient. They're sometimes a little quieter and they're just good for something like this, a PC that's cool. It's just circulating, just normal cooling water, nothing crazy in it. They normally work just fine. Now semi-open is an impeller with the with the topper removed. It's pretty much this, just take the sandwich and then remove the lid and there you go. You got the back still and you got the veins and that's a semi-closed or semi-open impeller. And these are much better at handling fluids with debris in them. And then you have open impellers, which is exactly what you think it is. It's an impeller with the, the top of the sandwich removed and the bottom. You just have you just have the PB and J in the middle, and these are these are good for really debris-filled fluids. Think like a concrete pump. Now you're embarrassing yourself, you geriatric fuck! Now the interesting part to me about using that these these type of pumps as an inspiration for a fan is that they're all pumps and they all move liquid, and air is a liquid. I mean it's just a fluid, air, but like a PC fan is an actual fan and it moves the fluid from one side to the other side along the axis of the fan. All these pumps, they're all centrifugal fans or centrifugal pumps. But it seems like Chris knows this and rather than just using any impeller, he seemed to have went for the open impeller design. So no top, no bottom, just the, just the veins in the middle. And then rather than just keeping those veins as they would appear in a 
pump made for fluids. He's given him more of an airfoil-like shape to hopefully improve its axial flow capabilities. Last up, we have Lucas and his fan, Halt Mine Bear, which I am confident was a perfect pronunciation of the German phrase that means hold my beer. Lucas said after watching the wonder from down under, he decided it was time to throw his hat in the ring and try to improve on that design even more. Now, in order to try to capitalize on this design philosophy, Lucas doubled down. He went for not one, but two impellers with an intake on both sides of the housing to hopefully provide even more static pressure. Now, I think this is actually a pretty clever idea, but when I was putting it together, I had a few questions <laughs> about some possible issues we could run into. Oh, issues that might limit its performance, you could say. But even then, this thing is an absolute unit. Look at, look, look at the size of that thing. Remember the wonderful down there was like this big. Now, before we get into the possible shortcomings of this design, uh, it is good to note that Lucas was smart enough to know that something this big and heavy was gonna need some extra support. So we did design it to have a bearing mounted on this far side, opposite of the fan, to give it, you know, a little bit of support, make sure it rotated smoothly and stayed relatively straight. And I think that was a very good idea and something that's very necessary for something this big. Because this thing's, this thing's heavy. This is a thick boy. Just for some context, the, the fan, this fan weighs just the impeller itself, 387 grams, whereas the seven times 110 weighs just a measly 14 grams. Now this is one of the smaller fans of the day, but that's different. Now that increase in mass is going to mean an increase in inertia. And as we all know, inertia is a property of mass. That means that this thick boy is definitely going to resist the change in rotational speed. <laughs> when the old A12X25 goes to start turning it, we all know the A12X25 isn't that powerful. It definitely missed leg day. So I do think that it's gonna have a hard time getting it going and even getting it up to speed. I don't even know how fast this is gonna get going, but I don't imagine it being pretty fast. Another thing I found interesting is the curve that were put on each one of these blades. When I hold it up like this, looks like he's got the right idea. This is kind of what we see on a lot of these centrifugal fans, but these are actually curved backwards. And originally I thought that this was a mistake when I threw it into the slicer. I was like, well, I'll just, I'll just mirror it and then it'll be the correct way around. But then I looked at this impeller and I noticed that he added blades to the top of this one that are very similar to the A12X25. And when this is mounted within the fan, as you can see, the fan goes kind of like that. These are the, quick, the correct way around. So that means as the fan is spinning this way, which is the way it spins, uh, these veins are gonna be kind of digging into the airflow if you want to think of it that way. So yeah, that, that, that could be a problem. I think it, it'll probably still work, but it's definitely not going to work as good as it could. That being said, either way, I think this design is pretty interesting, uh, having an intake on both sides of the centripetal type fan. And I think for anybody watching out there, this could be improved. So even, no matter what it scores, high or low, I think if you took some mass out of this thing and you redid the, uh, the veins inside, you could probably get even more performance out of a design like this. But for the time being, let's just see if how it is, is good enough to move any air. Now in the sound test, the 7X110 came in around 49.1 dBA. The MAV came in at 49.9. The Hulkmine Bear came in at 57.9. 
and the Spiral Impeller came in at 53.8. And in the performance test, the 7X110 came in at 2.3 millimeters of H2O, the Mav came in at 3, the Haltmine Bear came in at 2.5, and the Spiral Impeller came in at 2.3. Placing the Mav in first, the Haltmine Bear in second, the 7X110 in third, and the Spiral Impeller in fourth. And overall, you can see this is how they stacked up. So even though the Haltmine Bear, oh, I just cracked it. Even though the Haltmine Bear nailed it, didn't do as good as it possibly could have. It, it didn't do that bad, especially given how bad I thought it was gonna do based on the shape of these uh, curved impellers and the fact that it doesn't really move that fast to begin with. But either way, Still got second in today's episode and it didn't finish last overall. So that's that's something to be said And I really do think some performance left on the table that somebody should uh, take advantage of but anyway Thank you all for watching. I very much appreciate it. You guys all keep this series running nice and strong We are still getting new people sending in designs and I urge you to do the same if you want to get in on the action And if you do make sure to head down to the description below. There's a bunch of different links that'll help you understand uh, basically the biggest thing, the dimensions you need to maintain to make sure that your fan fits within the A12 X25 frame. There's a drawing down there that you can reference. There's also uh, a model as a, like a template model you could use to help you figure out which, what, what, what fan you want to design. And after you get your design figured out, make sure to send me at least a .stl or a .stp to the fan showdown at gmail.com. And we'll see you in the next episode. Oh, and if your fan has other components like a bearing or screws or stuff like that, you need to put it together. Make sure to include a bomb and I'll do it.